What's up guys, my name is Kenji and welcome back to my channel. So as promised, this is the second part of my tips for the MMI interview. In the last video I spoke to you guys about what I felt were the most common questions in the MMI interview and I gave you some tips on that. I also told you about what the MMI interview is and what happens in the actual process of the interview. But in this video I'm going to give you guys some more general tips about how to perform on the actual day of the interview. Um, the thing about medicine is that everyone who, is, who applies has really good grades and are really smart as well. Um, but I think these are the small things that can make that, that difference in the actual interview. And the reason I'm doing these videos is basically to um, level the playing field. Um, a lot of people who apply for medicine have paid like 400 or 500 pound uh, for like actual courses where they teach you how to perform in the interview. I don't know about you guys, but I don't have that type of money. And a lot of people have really supportive schools um, where they give them loads and loads of advice, loads and loads of uh, mock interviews. But I really want to just level the playing field and give you guys the advice that I was given for my interviews. So hopefully you can do really well uh, in your interviews as well. Before the start of the video, I thought I'd tell you guys that the next video I'll be posting is actually going to be a vlog. Um, so I've already recorded it. It's going to be a day in my life as a first year medical student at King's College London. Um, so please do subscribe to so stay tuned for that. So on to the topic of the video. So the first tip I'll give you guys is to dress smart. And you think you might think this is quite obvious, and I thought it's quite obvious too, until I saw someone rock up to our interview in a pair of Nikes. So unless you're going to a bit of basketball interview, I'd stick to wearing some smart shoes. Um, so for guys, that means, you know, full suit, um, smart shoes and for girls and um, the equivalent of that. The second tip is to basically introduce yourself. So whenever you go into the interview, make sure you go up to the interviewer, shake their hand. If there's someone watching the interview as well, go up to them and shake their hand as well. Um, you know, say what your name is and, you know, say like it's nice to meet you. So I walk in, shake their hands and be like, hi, my name's Kenji. It's really nice to meet you. And then crack on. And as soon as you leave, do the exact same thing. So shake their hands before you leave. Um, it really is important to shake their hands because it's a form of non-verbal communication. So shake their hands when you leave. Thank them for interviewing you and then head off to your next station. The next tip, uh, which is probably the most important tip for, for performing well in the interview, is to make sure that you forget what happened in the last station. I know sometimes it can be really hard, um, you know, to forget about what happened in the last station, because especially in, in one of my interviews, I didn't do too well in the maths station, so I left the station thinking, oh my gosh, I've absolutely screwed up this whole interview. But it really is important to just force yourself to forget what happened, um, because even though I had one station where I thought I did really, really bad in, I actually ended up getting the, the offer anyways. So make sure that you absolutely forget what you happened in the last station. And I know I said this in my last video, but it really, really is important to just clear your mind and start each station afresh because the interviewers don't know each other, they don't speak to each other. So just because you did bad in one station doesn't necessarily mean that you did bad in the whole interview um, overall. Another really good tip is to make sure you show up early to the interview. Um, so in my interview at Kings, I showed up at least an hour early and the same for Birmingham as well. The reason I say this is that when you sit in the environment of the interview, um, you know, you're sitting in the lobby with all of the other applicants, it really does help lower your heart rate. If you show up like 10, 15 minutes before, your heart rate's gonna be up here. But if you show up early, you get used to the environment, you get used to seeing the people you're gonna be competing against, and it really does help lower your heart rate. So when you go into the interview room, you're ready and you're prepared. It's also a really good point in time just to kind of um, prepare your mind and to get ready for, for actually performing in the interview. The next thing I'd say is to make sure you think before you speak. Um, I, don't know this, I don't mean this in a literal way. I mean, if they give you um, a question, feel free to just take 30, 30 seconds to sit there and think about your answer. I know it can be a bit awkward, you know, to kind of sit there in silence, uh, but in my interview, almost at every single station, I'd ask the person if I could just have 30 seconds to, to plan my answer. Some interviews, they do give you two or three minutes beforehand to read through like a paragraph of what the station is about. But in some interviews, they don't give you that at all. Um, they read the question out to you out loud right in front of you. So you really have no time to kind of plan your answer. So what I would say is just take 30 seconds to just sit there think about your answer and then you know go ahead and do it. I know it, feels, it seems like a waste of time, um, but if you have six or seven minutes, that doesn't sound like very long, but when you're actually sat there in, in the interview, that is plenty of time. So in a lot of my stations, I end up finishing like a minute to 30 seconds um, early. So do take some time to think about your answer before you speak. Even during giving your answer, if you just say, actually, um, you know what, I'm done with saying what I've said, um, you might like to take a further 30 seconds to just think about something else that I might want to add. That really helps. The next tip is, if you don't understand something, make sure you ask. Um, so, so in one of my interviews, they ask a question, and English isn't my best, you know, my best subject. So they'd have like a, a you know, a really fancy word, and I'd have no idea what it means. So I'd be like, sorry, excuse you just mind explaining what that means? And I know that sounds a bit silly. It's better to know what they're actually asking before you answer the question. Um, I can't remember what word it was exactly, but it was some long ass word. And I was like, I have no idea what that means. Um, so make sure you ask if you don't understand any part of the, um, the question. And also if you don't understand exactly what they're asking, just make sure you ask them and they'll kind of direct you in the right um, direction that you should be heading to. The next tip I'll give you, which kind of relates to the, the last few tips, is to take your time and speak slowly. Um, in the interview, you know, with your heart racing, you will speak 10 times faster than you normally would. So I'd say just definitely take your time to speak. Um, so like I said, seven minutes, six or seven minutes is a really, really long time. So take your time to speak clearly. And when you speak clearly, it also gives your time, your brain some time to actually think about what you want to say in the future. 
So speaking slowly really does help you communicate better and also to prepare your answers for later on. Another thing which is quite important is to smile and be friendly. Um, so I've been trying to do it in this video, I'm not very good at it. But again, try and just smile. So even if you're answering, answering something, whenever you answer something, just try and have a smile on your face, be friendly, um, try and have a laugh if you can. Not too much of a laugh, but have you know, a little bit of a, uh, develop a bit of a rapport with the person. The reason why this is important is that people don't always remember exactly what you say or what you do but they will always remember how you make them feel. So if you make the interviewer feel very comfortable um, and they actually feel like they like you, they will definitely, definitely uh, subconsciously give you high marks. Unless you're giving some bad news. You're giving some bad news to a patient actor that obviously does well, <laughs> but yeah. Another thing which I was told in my mock interviews is to actually just have a conversation with the person. In an interview, it can be quite hard to just you know, be yourself and just have a, have a chat with someone because obviously you're being interviewed and it's easy to see it as a test. What I would say is just see it as having a conversation with a normal person. So one of my interviews, I had a fifth year medical student um, who was assessing me and I actually just, um, you know, towards the end of the conversation, I actually just ended up, you know, just having a simple chat with her. So I was like, how are you finding your fifth year? You know, I had like 30 seconds left and I was just, you know, I asked her, like, how, you know, how is she finding it? I made her laugh um, she smiled and she actually, actually told me towards the end of my interview that I actually did a really good job. So do smile, have a chat with them and just, you know, just have a normal conversation with them. Just see it as a test. Just see it as a conversation, basically. The next tip, which is quite important, is not to jump towards the answer. Um, so in one station, they might ask you, you know, you have uh, one pair of lungs and you need to give it to the right person. And they give you like, um, I don't know, 15, 20 people with different conditions and different reasons why they deserve the lungs, for example. And they ask, they might ask you, you know, who you should give the lung to. In a situation like this, it's quite easy to just say, actually, I'd give to that person because of, you know, whatever reason. The most important thing is to go through each individual person, give pros and cons of everyone, and show both sides. So don't jump to an answer. Reason for every single person. And this applies to all the questions they might ask you. So if they ask you about euthanasia, um, don't just say like, I feel that's wrong. Um, I really don't like that. Show both sides. So show the pros of euthanasia, uh, show the cons of it as well, and then come to some some sort of logical conclusion which you find uh, makes sense. Next thing I'll say is to control your facial expressions. So as I said, if you know throughout the interview, try to smile, try to be happy, try to have a happy face on. Um, but obviously if something's sad, um, you're giving some bad news, um, you know, do show some empathy in your face, uh, show some seriousness in some questions, um, and basically just practice your poker faces. So control your sad faces, control your happy faces, and uh, control your like serious faces. Um, and then just forget what I just said. Just anyways, just, just control your facial expressions, be happy when you need to, and uh, be sad, or show some empathy when you need to. Right, so the next thing which is so, so important is to be confident. But I'm not a very confident person, but if you saw me in an interview, you think like, damn, he has a massive confidence. And the reason why is that if you're, if you're not a person to be confident, make sure you fake it. You only have one hour, which is not too long to actually fake your confidence. Um, if you're obviously a confident person, that's absolutely amazing. But if you're not that big of a confident person, don't worry too much about it. It's only one hour, so try your best to be confident. And by being confident, I mean, if you give an answer, make sure you give it strongly. Uh, make sure that you, you can back it up. Because sometimes they do try and test your opinion and test what you say and kind of oppose it. So make sure you're able to just stick by your word and back it up as well. And also then at some station, they might ask you, you know, are you sure with your answer? Do you want to add anything else? And if you feel confident in your answer, just say, you know, you know what, I'm very confident in my answer. Um, thank you very much for asking. And finally, probably the most important tip is when as soon as you leave that interview room, forget everything. Um, so don't worry about it. Whenever, when I left my interviews, um, I felt really, really bad. And I felt, I thought, shit, you know, I've actually completely messed up this interview. But don't worry about it. The thing about interviews is that you always remember what you did bad, but you never actually remember what you did good. Just leave it to the side, uh, forget what happened, and move on to uh, preparing for your next interview. Or if you don't have another interview, just chill and trust in your ability and trust in yourself, because I'm sure chances are that you actually did really well and you're just being hard on yourself. So don't worry, um, you know, keep praying and you'll get in. So thank you so much for watching, guys. I really hope that you've kind of taken one or two things from this video. And if you think it's been helpful, maybe share it with a friend who, who's also got some interviews coming up as well. The thing about medicine is that everyone competes against each other and everyone finds it so competitive. But the thing that people forget is that we're actually in it together. So if you find this helpful, share it with a friend. Um, if you like the video, please like the video as well. Uh, subscribe to the channel because as I said, I have a new video coming out in a few days, which is going to be about a day in my life as a first year medical student. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have an amazing day and I'll see you guys in the next one. Cause every